Hello everybody, the Utopian Duelist here, and today we have for you the Utopia deck profile for this month. Yay! As m some of you may know, I actually stopped running the Utopia deck as my main deck for a little while. Just because I wanted to try out Draco Pals, you know, I need a little bit of a break. Um, anyway, I still have the Draco Pals, I'm just, they're in my binder, kind of collecting dust. I'm going to go ahead and keep them for now, just because some of those, a lot of those cards in that deck are kind of hard to come by. Especially after I picked up my ulti Autize Vortex, which is nice. Um, but anyway, so now I'm back to running my Utopias, and they are definitely going strong now. And I picked up a bunch of side deck cards, which are really helping me out a lot, so let's, uh, let's get started. So we have one of the best cards in the deck, Goldenberg. Then we have Goldenberg's second cousin. We have the Let's Go Fish. Oh, that's me hitting the desk. Um, one of the best defensive cards in this deck by far. And it can also be an offensive card if you play it right. Uh, Fire Hand and its twin brother, Ice Hand. So what you do if you're wondering how you would play this card defensive. Um... What you do is you normal summon it. If you have the life points to take, and the, they have a monster that's difficult to get over, go ahead and swing into it with the fire hand. The fire hand will be destroyed. It'll hit the grave, right? Then what you'll do is you'll use its effect, destroy that monster, then special summon an ice hand, and you can actually keep going with the chain if you want to, if you have the life points to spare. I, I usually just do it to get rid of a problem monster or, you know... Yeah, but um, same thing works. Just set this card. Um, if you're going with Goldenberg, if you have something in your hand besides an Ice or Fire Hand, go ahead and uh, go ahead and keep the Ice or Fire Hand uh, just in case. Like your first like uh, Hexes monster that you make is ends up getting destroyed. It's a great card to have as backup because you have uh, six total in the deck if you want to count both of them. So yeah, uh, next card is Gigabyte. Which is a uh, part of the clown engine. Clown engine works really well in this deck. I was building gadgets at one point, um, so yeah. Uh, we have hat trigger. Hat trigger, wonderful card in the deck. And a lot of people get confused with this card because it's uh, most people think it's on your side of the field, but it's on the entire field. So if your opponent has two monsters and you have none, you can special summon this card. Like you don't even have to normal summon first. Uh, trick clown. Basically, you just need this and a gigabyte. Or you you just need two more uh one more monster on the field along with this and you pretty much instantly got uh, F zero just with those two cards. Um, so basically you just need this and Goldenberg Ting Goldfish. Uh, if you want to special summon a hat tricker with this, it works too. Um, we have Lila, which is basically MST as a monster. Uh, when you normal summon or special summon it, basically any way you summon it, you're gonna go in attack, then it switch it to defense. To get it, or um, anyway, when it switch to defense, you can destroy one uh, spell or trap card your opponent, your opponent controls, which means you can even pop scales if you want to, uh, which can destroy some decks. Uh, then we have the one photon thrasher, just because it's a nice little road to target, and um, it's a nice thing to draw on first turn. Helps your plays out a lot. You can even go with this for your special uh, special summon. This then go into. Uh, Trick Clown for your normal, and that works too. So there's a lot of different combos in this deck. It works uh, works really well. Uh, I guess next we'll go on on the spells. Alright, so we start off with two MST. These are just kind of filler right now. Um, I may put in a second Rank Up Magic Astral Force, and I kind of want to get a Pot of Dem what is it? Pot of Democracy, the one where you shuffle back three monsters of different types, and you can... Lord, what is it? And you can draw one card but you cannot conduct your battle phase for that turn, that, that'd be a nice card to play. I, I would enjoy playing that. Because basically it's Digusto Emerald as a spell, but I do want to get another Digusto Emerald too, just because of how well it works. But I probably will keep at least one MST, so yeah. Next we have my Black Rare Regeki. I did have the Gold Rare, but I like the Black Rare better. Uh, we play the One Foolish Burial, so you can actually set, uh, you can Normal Summon, then send the Trick Clown. Like, if you don't want to go into zero first off, if you're just looking for an XZ monster, you can do a normal summon, then play Foolish Burial, send the uh, Trick Clown to the, from the deck to the grave, then its effect will fire, and you can special summon it, pay a thousand special summon it back, and then you can overlay it, so. You don't really have to worry about paying a lot of life points in this deck, because um, most of the time you're pretty safe no matter what, just with the amount of back row in this deck. Uh, anyway, got my Rota 
in Platinum Rare. Very, very beautiful card. Uh, one Day at Peace. One Day at Peace is amazing in this deck. It's uh, definitely better than Upstart Goblin because each uh, its effect is each player draws one card and neither player takes damage until the end of the opponent's next turn. So basically, it's going to go... You activate it during your turn. You're both going to draw a card. Nobody can take damage until it comes back around to you. Which is a great way to just save your butt uh, if you're waiting for, like, plays. And it also helps you set up board if you're, um, like, if you're just having trouble doing that. Let's say your opponent's, uh, running, screw it, Magisters. And somehow, well, not somehow, Magisters actually do this pretty well. But they're bouncing everything you got back, uh, destroying everything you got, you know. Dark holding the field left and right. Let's say they've activated 45 copies of Dark Hole. <laughs> Why the fuck not? Um... Uh, this really helps you get your plays set up, um, just because you cannot take any damage, even if your field's open. So, yeah. Uh, next card is my ulti rank up magic astral force. This is by far one of the prettiest cards I own. You can't really tell on camera very well, though, but it looks really good in real life. Um, this is for, uh, Beyond and Utopic Dragon. Utopic Dragon will probably go in, uh, will probably get changed out for Zexal Hope once I order one. Because, guys, Zexal Hope is out now. And, God, what is it? Is Kaiser coming out? I know, uh, Dystopia is a prize card, I'm pretty sure. And, honest to God, I would love that. And my friend Ryan has told me he if he wins, like, Nationals and gets that... He's going to make a video of just, like, destroying it and just, like, email it to me. Just because he knows I have a Utopia thing. Um, Instant Fusion. Very, very card-like card. -like card. Uh, this is for Norden. Uh, great card. Helps you out in a lot of, lot of situations. A lot of situations. Um, then we'll move on to the traps of the deck, which is a pretty decent amount. Uh, we play Double Quaking. Which uh, helps out a lot in the deck. Very defensive. Um, we play triple mirror force. I got that secret mirror force. Uh, I want to pick up all three uh, in secret because I just like the way it looks. But we play triple mirror force. Uh, one scrap iron scarecrow. That's pretty much all my attack negation. Now here for my summon negation. We play one solemn warning. Right now, two Grand Horn. I want to get a third one to put in here just because I like the effect of Grand Horn. It sends them directly into their battle phase. So basically, if you negate that first summon, they're directly into the battle phase. And pretty much, they're either going to not have a lot on the board or not have anything since you negated that. They are going to get the draw card, but they're going to be forced to go into main phase two. And once they're in main phase two, well, yeah. You, they, they, they're not going to be able to attack you. They're going to be able to set up the rest of their board, maybe. It just depends on how much recovery their deck actually has. But uh, this card's helped me out a lot. And then Bottomless. This is probably going to go out for the second, uh, third Grand Horn. Or I might see if I can get um, another, like one of the new Bottomless. Or not Bottomless. One of the new Trap Hole cards. And kind of run a little bit of a Reflasia engine in here. Because I, I did that back when I didn't run it. Back when I picked up Reflacia for the Draco Pals. And I ended up just running this like full spell build. Full spell monster build. So, And then the, the Reflacia kind of just got passed down to this deck. So I, I did kind of enjoy that. I ended up having to trade the Reflacia to Ryan for... I think it was part of my trade for the Ulti Vortex. So yeah. Then the one Xyz Reborn, which is a nice card. Um... What you do, my favorite move is, my favorite two moves with Xyz Reborn is, once your opponent finally destroy it, like if they if they have trouble with, um, Lord, what's it called? If they have trouble getting F0 off the field and they finally, like they try so hard and they finally get it off, you activate Xyz Reborn like upon destruction basically. And then bring it back and this becomes the Xyz material attached to it. And you just watch them like die inside. Like, just the life fade from their eyes. Another thing you can do with this is you can, um, XC summon, or, uh, summon the Utopia from the graveyard. And then overlay, this will become a XC's material on it. Then you can overlay straight to, um, lightning and you will have the two overlay units to go to the 5k. So that's another, 
big bonus to the deck. Eh. Uh, now we go on to the uh, extra deck. We have my traditional three copies of Utopia. If you're not running three copies of Utopia, guys, there's something wrong with your deck. Uh, especially if it is a Utopia deck, you always run three copies just in case one of them ends up, hey, you're going into Lightning. Right before you go into Lightning, someone activates a bottomless or something like that. You're pretty much screwed at that point, but yeah. We have my uh, Japanese gold lace, my regular gold lace, and my gold uh, gold super. I think is what that is. The super with the gold variety. I'm pretty sure it's gold super. I don't. I don't remember. Anyway, so there's those. I played double lightning, just because lightning is a great card in the current meta. It, it, I'm pretty sure it'd be a great card in any meta, just because of the fact that it can get over almost anything. Plus, it's just a good little card if you if your opponent's running full back row deck. Um, then it's definitely amazing because this will get over everything they got plus you can just keep like hitting them hitting them hitting them with that 25 and normally you'll have game within a few turns uh, we run the one beyond for the Astro Force. beyond's a great card when you summon it um, and I'm almost considering running prime in here just because of beyond's effect because I have used it more than like you more than you would think um and I've also done like take target beyond uh, after I actually summon it, everything goes to zero on the board. I'll target like my extra Digesto Emerald or whatever I have sitting on the board. Banish it, target a Utopia in the graveyard. I'll wait it I'll see if I can keep that alive long enough. Wait a turn. I'll instead of my draw phase, I'll add back the Astro Force, drop the Astro Force to the grave to um XC summon the Utopia Dragon, which is our next card. Which is actually a pretty decent play because most of their monsters on the field at that time are going to be zero, or all of them, unless they like, unless I did went ahead and destroyed one, and all that. They're going to take probably 3k and 4k to wreck a couple times with that play. We have the F zero. F zero is a great shield card against most cards you're going to go up against. Um, you can ask anyone I know if I know that your deck has a problem with F zero. That is legitimately. I will make sure. I don't care how many resources I have to burn, and most of the time it's not many, just because of the way how much consistency this deck has. This is going to be like the first card I pull out, first turn, first thing I do, um, just because of how hard it is for some decks to get over, and it destroys Cosmos. Like Cosmos hate it. I I made I made a back when Michael, and I'm pretty sure Michael still watches my channel. Back when Michael played Cosmos, I mean, I, I remember he scooped multiple times whenever I'd pull out of zero. So uh, we we played double Castell. I'm not a big fan of Honor Art just because it has to be in a, fa a face up attack position monster. Um, and I'm pretty sure it specifies that it has to have been special summoned as well. This you can just any face up card on the field, so you can get rid of anti spell for some reason if you needed to. This is I'm just going off of exa an example from my. Uh, Lord Almighty, from my Draco Pals, had to think for a second, um, but yeah, you can make this, um, if you can, then you can bounce the anti-spell back into the deck, I remember I had to do that a couple times against, um, Brent, one of the new people that came to club, he's, um, basically like my card dealer, he's got a lot of expensive cards, and every time I need something, he usually has it, and he's willing to trade it, so anyway, to go to Emerald, the Astro Emerald is amazing. Just, I, I, I do want to run two of them. That's probably what the, I'm probably going to take Dark Rebellion out for um, two, for another Dark Astro Emerald. Just because I know it's low attack. But if you put it in defense position, most people aren't going to go for that, like, right off. And what you can do is you can target your Utopias in the graveyard. Your Utopias and your Lightnings in the graveyard and shuffle them back. And somebody left this on the field until it was out of overlay units. Because they were so concerned with trying to get my lightning off the field. I ended up summoning lightning that duel probably five, maybe six times all together. Just off of my Exes Reborn, my Degusto Emeralds, and everything else. I mean, it was it was complete nightmare just being able to recycle lightning that many times. Uh, complete nightmare for my opponent. Um, anyway, Dark Rebellion, Exes Dragon. Uh, great card for getting over things. Um, I don't go into it very often at all. It's just kind of a... It's kind of my backup lightning. It's, it's, it's just kind of in there to be a beater, really. That's pretty much all it is. It's a great card, plus it's a platinum rare, and I, I like platinum rares. They're pretty. 
Um, then we have my King of the Fair Lambs. Now, when you go with the F Zero combo, most of you guys know the F Zero combo. Um, especially some of the King of the Feral Imps to detach the Trick Clown. Um, then, especially some of the Trick Clown back, you'll get the ad for the Gigabyte. Especially some of the Gigabyte because you control the Trick Clown. Then you actually, I do do this a lot, just because I'm most of the time summoning it first, summoning F Zero first turn. I'll go ahead and go with the king, another King of the Feral Imps just so I can get the other Gigabyte added to hand, just so I can have that good hand presence. But you can if it's later in game. You can go ahead, if you want to, you can strategically cut one of their monsters in half. But if you're on F-Zero, I want to recommend that just because you want to be able to do as much damage with their monsters as possible. You can go the Gusto Emerald uh, and go ahead and get the Shuffle back and draw. Um, you can you don't even have to go King of the Fair Limps. If you can get enough uh, monsters on the board, you can go Double Castell. You can go King of the Fair Limps and one Castell. I mean, there's a lot of just, like, combos. And uh, as you go in on playing the deck, you'll start to kind of just have a Green Hornet moment, um, and if you guys haven't seen Green Hornet, it's, um, it's kind of an older, I think it's, I think it's Marvel, Marvel or DC, I don't know, I can't remember what it is, um, and it shows this guy, he's the Green Hornet, you know, if you guys have ever heard of the Green Hornet, um, and whenever he gets into a fight, it's like he has some kind of Shah Ringon like power, where he just sees everything that's gonna happen right out in front of him, when you look at your first hand for this deck, that's when you know you have the deck down packed is when you have one of those moments and you see every possible way you can play that hand. And it's 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 amazing. Although I've only been able to ever do that with two decks, and that's my Draco Pals just because I played them and practiced with them so much, and my Utopias just because they're they're my deck. They're my deck. And then we have the one Elder Entity Norton, which is an amazing card. Amazing card. Um Helps with a lot of plays. You know, you can actually... I, I picked this up from Sam. You can actually go into Fairy Cheer Girl with this. Like, if you pull the monster back from the grave, overlay, go Fairy Cheer Girl, and you detach the door, and you actually get the draw card for Fairy Cheer Girl. So that can help out a lot. Um, now we'll go on to the side deck, which is why I picked up a lot of expensive cards for the side deck recently. Let's see if I can get this resorted back out. Because I've already recorded this deck list once. It's my storage actually like ran out halfway through the video, so anyway. We have the one anti spell, great against pendulums. And actually guys, you can use no, actually you can't. I don't know why. I was about to say you can use I guess the Emerald to recycle anti spell for I'm like, oh my god. Uh anyway guys, sorry, I'm really tired, haven't got a lot of sleep lately. Uh school started back for me, so it's kinda yeah. Uh we have the one mask restrict. Any good for good against Gradle Kaiju uh, which would be Mace, good against Monarchs, good against uh, multiple other decks. We have a uh, uh, Mistake, a uh, great card to play against anything that adds a lot. Uh, also, it's it's pretty good to add against, uh, or to use against Draco Pals, just because it keeps them from getting the ad, the ads off of shit. Um, Skulker Bat Joker, Monkey Board. Actually, it keeps you, pretty much keeps them from activating... Um, Pendulum Sorcerer, so if you if you wait long enough for them to pop, like as soon as they Pendulum Summon Pendulum Sorcerer, and they pop their scales, you want to flip this upon the, uh, the destruction of the scales, and then their scales will be popped, and they will not be able to activate, or they will not be able to add the other Pendulum Scales from the deck to the hands, so that's uh, very annoying for them, basically complete scale destruction. Um, we have Non-Fusion Area, Sam... I picked that up especially for you. If you guys don't know Sam Cox Yu-Gi-Oh, he's a pretty, he's a decently famous YouTuber. Um, I've gotten a couple videos with him. He goes to the local tournaments I do, and he's come down to Muskogee a couple times. Um, Stygain Diger, yeah, Stygain Diurge is a card that wrecks my mirror match absolutely. Uh, and it, the effect of it is reduce the levels of all face-up monsters your opponent controls by one. So that wrecks any like specific level spam deck. Um, it, it would even hurt uh, Burning Abyss and PK Fire just because they specialize in pulling out level 3s. Or, I'm sorry, rank 3s. Like, isn't that their whole point of the deck? I, I know a decent amount about PK Fire, but I, I haven't played it, so I don't... I know some of the weaknesses. I'm pretty sure that would even work against PK Fire, honestly, just because all the monsters would be qualified as level 2. So, yeah. I play the one Necro Valley. 
Um, and Ma Malcolm wouldn't like this, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it anyway. Wow, this video has been 20 minutes. Um, Necro Valley. I, I was going to record a video this Saturday against my, like, my Utopias against um, his Spirals. And I played Necro Valley. And Necro Valley keeps uh, cards from targeting other cards in the graveyard. Well, I played Necro Valley. It was my first turn draw. I cited a couple other things in. I played Necro Valley. And we just kind of went on without... We basically completely ignored it was there. I let him use his big reds to target his drones. Neither of us noticed. Uh, I probably wouldn't have noticed at all, except Malcolm pointed it out to me uh, later on that day. That, oh, wait, Necro Valley was on the field. I couldn't have done any of that. So I wouldn't end up winning anyway, even though I let him play it out fully. I didn't let him. I wasn't paying attention. But anyway, system down. Works against... Um, most uh, machine decks, especially Cosmo, level up area B. This is great in this deck because all level four higher monsters, while this card is faced upon the field, are in defense position. And since ranks are qualified as level zero, level zero, um, you can have a rank ten on the field if you want to, and it won't affect. We run the one prohibition just for filler. Intercept wave. It's a quick play spell. All synchro monsters on the field are changed defense position at the, um, and then return all face-up synchro monsters to the extra deck during the end phase. We have the one flying C just for any special summoning decks. And then, this is my kaiju, guys. This is a card called Santa Claus. So, a lot of you may not know about it. A lot of you may know about it. It's a kai, it's literally a gamma seal with 1200 attack. And even if you, like, special summon to your opponent's side of the field and destroy it, you still get the draw card. So that's cool. And then you have the Abyss Dweller. Just for uh, anything that would give you problems. So that was my Utopia Day, guys. Um, like, subscribe. You know the rest, guys. Oh, actually, no, no, no. Before I end, guys, I'm at 89 subscribers right now. So subscribe. If you're watching this, guys, subscribe. Uh, I've, I've noticed a few of my videos have hit 1k views, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm probably going to do, see if I can maybe do a live stream from Club. Um, for when I get 100 subscribers, maybe Malcolm can help me set up kind of a giveaway thing. I don't know um, what I'm going to be doing for that quite yet, just because I'm about a, uh, 10 or so subscribers away. And I don't want to get it set up to, like, like, right now, so... Until I actually know what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I don't even know. That probably didn't even make sense. Anyway, guys. Like, subscribe. You know the rest, guys. See ya.